All right, this is Chaplain Bob. This is going to be uh, part B of part two of fire. Something I should have mentioned. Now, remember, it said that Korah and his family, uh, the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed her. Well, let's take a look. In the book of Jude, let's take a look at, read uh, the book of Jude real quick. And then we'll go back and take a look at Korah. Jude, chapter 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation... It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Boy, you can't find that nowadays. So, uh, Now here's a warning, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Uh, if you don't know what that's all about, uh, read my study on the angels that sinned on my playlist, Genesis 6. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how do you turn the grace of God into lasciviousness? Well, uh, simple. Teach people eternal security, once saved, always saved, and say that no matter what you do, you're saved. And then people think, well, I'll just live in sin. And what is sin? Sin's, uh, the Bible says it's transgression of the law. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to live in sinless perfection. No, but that's how they turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye, knew, ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of, uh, out of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Didn't we just read about that? In part two, yeah, we did. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. Even as... Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, What's dominion? Government. Despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Now why did angel, uh, Michael contend with the devil? Why, did the, why was the devil contending with, uh, about the body of Moses? Nobody knows where Moses was buried. Said The, the Bible says that God buried Moses. Well, I did a, a, a Bible study on that. You can look it up. And uh, Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, uh, was a prophet of God and died. And some people threw a dead man into his uh, grave. And when the dead man touched the bones of Elisha, he uh, came back to life. So that's, some, that's what you call Holy Ghost power, people. So why did uh, Michael contend? Why did the devil contend about the body of Moses? 
Maybe that's why. I don't know. Because you know for a fact that people would have grabbed the bones of Moses and, and turned it into some kind of a shrine or, you know, they would have worshipped them or something. I don't know. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Brute beasts. All right, so they were, these angels are called beasts. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 32, Paul writes, If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. See, Paul fought with beasts at Ephesus. Okay, back to Jude. Verse 10. But these... Speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Verse 11. Listen carefully. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way, in the way of Cain. What was the way of Cain? Murder. And ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. Now, for those of you who don't know it, Balaam was a prophet of God who uh, decided to be disobedient because he wanted money greedily. He ran greedily after the heir of Balaam and perished in the gainsaying of Cori, or Korah. That's the Greek rendering of Korah. Now, didn't we just read in uh, Fire Part 2 about Korah? Oh, yeah. Verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of wind, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots. What do they mean twice dead? Now, what does it mean twice dead? Uh, the body and maybe the soul and spirit? Uh, I, that's what I think. You know, just because your body dies doesn't mean your spirit dies, but... Uh, uh, you know, physically and spiritually, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Verse 13, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering star to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches with ungodly sinners have spoken against him. The, these are murmurers, complainers. Isn't that what uh, Israel did against Moses? These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you that there should be mockers, mockers in the last time, who would walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, See, these people will separate themselves from you, from us. They will do that. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Now, remember in Numbers 16, in verse 30, we read, 
Moses said to the people, But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed them up in their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. So what does it mean, the earth opened her mouth? Well, you it explains itself, right? Now, where in the earth, uh, where in the world in the Bible does it talk about the earth opening her mouth? Well, Revelation chapter 12. People, this is why the King James is so important, because association, word association, when certain words are in certain groupings and orders, you can get understand the context, and usually the Old Testament will help explain the New Testament, and the New Testament will help explain the old. So let's go to Revelation chapter 12. We'll start in verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, and part one, fire, we read about the great Lord said he took Israel and, and carried him out of Egypt on the um, as a great eagle. So here it is during the tribulation period, God's going to do something similar to what he did back in the Old Testament in the days of Egypt. I mean, the plagues of Egypt mimic the plagues of Egypt under Moses against Pharaoh. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Now, a time is a year. A time, and times is two years and half a time. So that's three and a half years. Verse 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So evidently, the serpent's going to cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman to try to get her to be carried away of the flood, to be drowned. But the earth is going to open her mouth and swallow up the flood of the dragon. Now what are these, flood, these floods, these waters? Uh, well, this is April 1st, 2019, and the... Um, the breadbasket of the United States, I think around Nebraska and all that, got hit with some major floods, but that's not what we're talking about. The waters of the flood can be explained in Revelation 17 and verse 15. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues or languages. So the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So guess what's happening in Europe and the United States? The flood of the dragon. Immigration. Third world heathen satanic flood. So there you go, people. All right, well, this is uh, part B of uh, part 2B of fire. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.